Hi, I'm Pamela Douglas from the UCLA Semmel Institute. Here in Lesson 3.6, we're going to talk about a very interesting application of using Weka for classifying functional MRI data. Classifying these data can be very challenging for a number of reasons. First of all, these data are very high dimensional. A structural MRI scan can consist of approximately 100,000 voxels, and an fMRI scan records signals from these voxels over time, resulting in four-dimensional data. The number of possible features and attributes that can be derived from these data are very large. And one of the recent events that highlights why this can be problematic was the ADHD 200 Global Machine Learning Competition. The goal of this competition was to predict a subject's diagnosis as either typically developing or ADHD using a combination of demographic and structural and functional neuroimaging features. A number of sites from around the world collaborated to provide data for this competition. This resulted in approximately 800 subjects worth of data uh, in, the, in the training set, as well as 200 data, subjects worth of data in the test set, where the diagnosis was unknown to the participants in the competition. My team participated in this competition, and our first goal was to figure out how to derive meaningful information from structural MRI data. The first thing we did was calculate free surfer metrics used for automated brain parcellation. This resulted in nine different attributes like brain volume from 68 different cortical regions, as well as three different measures from each of 45 different subcortical and non-cortical brain regions. Collectively, this resulted in more than 700 structural brain attributes using just the SMRI data. Our next step was to determine how to extract features from the resting state functional MRI data. The first thing we did was calculate resting state functional connectivity matrices, or pairwise time series correlations between different brain regions. We then calculated the total number of independent components used that were required to, to describe 99% of the data variants. We also calculated power spectra, regional homogeneity, and a number of different graph theoretic metrics like functional modular organization. Overall, this resulted in more than 100,000 functional neuroimaging attributes. My team, my team, as it turns out, placed third in this competition using a voter perceptron as implemented in Weka. But the overall results of this competition were very unsatisfying, as it turned out the winning team used only demographic features, a very small number of attributes overall. Classification using these features alone outperformed all the other teams that used demographic features in combination with MRI data. This result really highlights the importance of using feature selection either as a separate step or as part of a regularization scheme, since the inclusion of irrelevant and redundant features can vastly degrade the performance of a classifier. Another reason why Weka can be useful for classifying MRI data is that there are a number of algorithms that are readily available for testing that have already been vetted by the machine learning community. In a previous lesson, you learned about the no free lunch theorem. As a brief reminder, each classifier has its own inductive bias. And there's no way to know a priori which classifier will perform best on a given data set. Therefore, it's often a good idea to test out a few different classifiers and use model selection to determine your best option. In the exercise that follows, you'll be able to test out a few different classifiers using the classic Haxby et al. data set. In this 2001 study, functional MRI data was collected while subjects viewed images from different eight different object categories. You'll also get to, get to test out a few different methods for feature selection, as well as uh, parameter tuning using nested cross-validation. In summary, functional MRI data is high dimensional. So feature selection and regularization are highly recommended. Weka can be very useful for classifying these data since Weka has the capability of handling large data sets and combining across multiple feature categories like nominal and numeric data as well as handling missing data. Testing out a variety of models and classifiers can be very helpful. Lastly, the Weka group has kindly now added a brain button to their software, so you can now load in MRI data files in nifty format directly into Weka for classification without needing to convert it to the attribute relation file format. I hope that you'll enjoy testing out Weka for classification on brain imaging data as much as I have. Thanks so much.